In 1939, Ripley's Believe It or Not wrote about the school in Madison, Tennessee and included its amazing story in their long list of unbelievable things. They reported that it was the only college in America that was self-supporting, meaning it operated without external funds, income or endowments. The remarkable story goes back to 1904 when Percy T. McGann and E. A. Sutherland started a school that was originally called the Nashville Agricultural and Normal Institute. Here in Madison, Tennessee, just 10 miles north of Nashville, one of America's most remarkable and innovative schools started. E. A. Sutherland and Percy McGann resigned their jobs from Emmanuel Missionary College and moved down to work in the South. In 1904, they were here on the Cumberland River with Ellen White on the Morning Star boat when it suddenly broke down. Ellen White and Mr. Palmer went ashore and saw a 412-acre farm that was for sale. It was overgrown, full of stones and run down, but Ellen White commented that she had seen the place in a vision and thought they should purchase it. The two teachers, E. A. Sutherland and Percy McGann, were dismayed, for they did not think the place looked promising at all, but they decided to trust the wisdom of Ellen White and moved ahead and purchased the property. It began its first term with 11 students, but quickly grew, and under Ellen White's guidance, the educational philosophy of this school was established. Madison sought to educate the whole person, body, mind, and soul, instilling in students a spirit of self-sacrifice, service, and a love of the simple, frugal life. Using the large property that it had, students worked on the land, ensuring that they could pay their way through, making it a self-supporting institution. If students did not have enough money, they were not turned away, but encouraged to work their way through school. The teachers did not have high-paying salaries, and staff and students would work together every day for five hours. The focus of Madison was to be different. Athletics and sports programs were not included, but instead there was a strong emphasis on mission work. The purpose was to train self-supporting domestic and foreign missionary workers and teachers. The education given at the Madison School is such as will be accounted a treasure of great value by those who take up missionary work in foreign fields. If many more in other schools were receiving a similar training, we as a people would be a spectacle to the world, to angels and to men. As Madison expanded, it began to plant satellite schools and institutions all across the country. By 1914, there were 40 schools with 1,000 students. In 1947, the self-supporting entities formed the Association of Seventh-day Adventist Self-Supporting Institutions, or ASI. Once a year, they would meet here at Madison for a self-supporting workers' convention, laying the foundation for the annual ASI convention that continues to this day. In 1979, the name was changed to reflect a more diverse membership to Adventist Layman's Services and Industries, and it is a powerful, mission-driven organization that has been responsible for some great projects over the years. Unfortunately, the school would sadly close in 1964, and the reasons are complex and many. Madison pioneered the self-supporting work, not to be confused with independent ministries. Ellen White spoke strongly in favor of the self-supporting work, saying in the book Welfare Ministry, page 64, there is a large field open before the self-supporting gospel worker. Self-supporting work was and is to work harmoniously with the organized work and the collaboration between these two entities will make the gospel work doubly effective. <laughs>